Who writes this stuff? What kind of is this? Hi, it's me again, and it's great that the nonsense that is the TV license is doing the rounds in the mainstream media again. And loads of you brilliant people out there sent me a clip that's on Talk TV. Thought we could have a look at it together, and I've got a newspaper article that backs it up as well. But it's, um, it's not made me happy. Let's, let's put it like that. To guarantee the BBC's income, anyone who watches television programmes must have a valid licence for their home, whether they watch it on the internet or on the telly. What kind of shit is this? Who wrote... Let me take these stupid earphones out. Who writes this stuff? What they said there was, to guarantee the BBC's income, anyone who watches television programmes must have a valid licence for their home, whether they watch it on the internet or on a television. Who wrote this? Who wrote this absolute dross? That is just propaganda put out there. There's so many people at the minute interested in cancelling their TV license fee for whatever reasons, financial reasons, or a protest against the BBC, or they just don't feel after it. There's a million different reasons at the minute why people are looking at not paying the TV license fee. You are mainstream media. Give the people the correct information. It's a shorter sentence, the correct information. If you watch or record anything as it's being broadcast or access BBC iPlayer to watch BBC programmes, you require a television licence. And to guarantee the BBC... Why we have to guarantee the BBC's income? I don't want to guarantee the BBC's income, the same as I don't want to guarantee ITV's income. Stand on your own two feet and make your own money. All that is is propaganda scaring people out. It set me off a bit quicker than I wanted this clip and I'm, I'm only showing little bits of it i'll put a link to this whole talk tv thing down in the description you go and watch it yourself and let me know what you think right what's the what's the next bit in december the culture secretary lucy fraser said criminal prosecutions for not paying the tv license fee was morally indefensible i'm also concerned uh, about the prosecution of people and that is something that i have said i would look at in the charter review so if you're concerned, Lucy Fraser, about the prosecutions of people, you, why wait until the next Charter Review, which is in 2027? It should be happening now. Why are you waiting for it? If you're that concerned, like most of us are, you're the one with the power to actually do something about it, love. So get it done. Why wait more and more years for more and more people to be prosecuted, to drag, be dragged through the court system, to have that stress? Why not just... Do it now. Let's get this all discussed, done, signed, sealed and delivered. Maybe it can't happen until 2027 because you can't change the charter. I understand that. But you could be getting this signed and sealed now, ready to go straight into power in 2027. Why is the debate still happening, Lucy Fraser? If you're that concerned, you said you're concerned. Show your concern then. Get it decriminalised. Get it decriminalised today. All right, what's the next bit? A TV licensing spokesperson said, TV licensing's primary aim is to help people stay licensed and avoid prosecution, which is always a last resort. How can you not find that funny? How can you not find that funny? TV licensing... Hang on, let me get rid of the camera. TV licensing's primary aim is to help people stay licensed and avoid prosecution, which is always a last resort. TV licensing's primary aim is to help people stay licensed. Not correctly licensed, not find out if they require a license. Their primary aim is to get people to buy a TV license. I don't require a TV license. I don't. I don't watch or record anything that's been broadcast. I don't access BBC iPlayer full stop. I don't require a license, but yet I still get these letters, these letters constantly. I've got a stack of them like that that have just been sent to my addresses because their primary aim is to sell licenses. Not figure out what's best for the person, not help people understand whether they need one or not. No. Their primary aim is to sell licenses. That's it. And if they can't sell one, they want to scare you with this stuff or the threat of court. And if you still don't do that, they want to take you to court to fine you over a TV subscription that you may not need. Next bit. 
The Evening Standard's court correspondent Tristan Kirk has spent years trying to reveal the truth behind the sped-up system he says is criminalising vulnerable people. It's a fast-tracked, streamlined court process dealt with entirely behind closed doors where a magistrate sits uh, in, in a room in an office, perhaps in their living room, and dealing with people uh, on the papers alone, written evidence, where they basically rubber stamp um, a prosecution and, and convict them in all but the, the, the rarest of cases. So he said there, the prosecution for TV licence offences happens in a closed room and it's just rubber stamped by a magistrate based on written evidence. Now, where does this written evidence come from? Oh, the written evidence comes from somebody who's got a chip on their shoulder because they all got massive attitude, the TV license enforcement officers. They have provided the written evidence. There's nothing, no investigation, nothing. This is the evidence and that's it. So this is like, they, I've heard so many stories in the past of them turning up and people saying, I don't require one, blah, blah, blah. And the enforcement officer said, all right, just sign here and I'll go away. You don't know what they're going to write on there after the fact. And the problem is, this evidence is provided by people who earn commission. How is that the correct way to pay them? I can't find out, and I really would like to. I know they're targeted on how many TV licenses to sell. Are they also targeted on the amount of prosecutions they can bring to unlicensed people? Would you not like to know that? Because then they're incentivized. They're incentivized to take people to court. Paying these people by commission is the wrong way to do it. And I know we saw recently, I showed you a job advert for a TV license enforcement officer, and it didn't mention commission. I am certain they still pay commission from looking into it a bit more. So how is that right? How does that work? It happens behind closed doors with written evidence by somebody who's got who's vindictive against you because you don't want to buy the thing they're selling. So they take you to court, and you're going to get into trouble based on what they have said and let's not forget these people behave like this morning buddy hi hi don't worry about it it's just for your tv license not today you good motherfucker yeah okay In the year to June 2022, more than 47,500 people were prosecuted and over 44,000 were convicted for failing to pay for a £159 TV licence. Can you see that? 47,622 prosecutions. I talked about this in a video the other day and hopefully that's where Talk TV picked it up from because it got a lot of views. These were the numbers I talked about the other day, the same numbers. And 44,000... 106 convictions. So of all the people that had prosecutions brought about, only 3,000 weren't followed through with. That's 130 people a day convicted of a TV license offence. Now it's based on the evidence from a TV license enforcement officer. So this could be zero. You don't have to talk to these people. They don't have any powers. When they knock on your door, they can't demand to come in. The only way they can come in is with a warrant, one or two of those issued a year, so there's nothing to worry about, or you invite them in. Open the door. They say, hi, I'm from TV license. And even if you genuinely don't require a television license like myself, do not engage with these people. They're vindictive and they earn commission. So they're, they're incentivized to try and stitch you up there's like the story last week where it was the poorly bloke or he was looking after his missus or something. It was an absolute mess of a situation. The direct debit got cancelled through no fault of his own. They didn't send him the payment card that he asked for. An enforcement officer turned up and sold him a license on the doorstep, but still proceeded with a prosecution. These people are vindictive. They earn commission. Do not talk to them. This could be zero. These numbers here, 130 people a day. And where was the... Uh, 47,622 prosecutions in that year could have been zero if you didn't talk to the TV license enforcement officer. There is no other way of being caught. I stumbled across this. This is a, an FOI request. Where is it? I was just peeing about on that website today. It's not one of my freedom of information requests. It's from uh, John Piper. It's filed in March 23. 
Can you please supply the following information? The number of TV licensed prosecutions taken place where evidence from a TV detector van has been submitted to court. The number of successful TV licensed prosecutions or evidence from a TV detector van. Okay. They did reply, weirdly, because they don't reply to many of mine, but look what they said. As stated on TV licensing website, TV licensing has not, to date, used detection evidence in court. Because they can't. Because there's no such thing as detector vans. The, now, I never say watch stuff you shouldn't be watching if you don't pay. If you watch a recording that's being broadcast and you'd like to use BBC iPlayer to watch BBC stuff, you need to buy the license. That's just the rules the way they are, okay? I don't do any of that. I don't require one. Do not talk to these people, whether you need one or not. Do not talk to them. That number would be zero. It would be zero if nobody talked to these TV lines before. They are the scum of the earth, it, lower than traffic wardens. Ugh. I want to watch that Lucy Fraser bit again. That's what I want to do. Hold on. I'm also concerned uh, about the prosecution of people, and that is something that I have said I would look at in the Charter Review. Yeah, she definitely said she's concerned about the prosecution of people, but not concerned enough to actually be doing anything about it. Pull your finger out, Lucy Fraser. I can't see anything that you've done so far in your tenure. You're talking a good game, but nothing is happening. If you don't have the power to do it, then lobby the people that do. Start doing more media saying you're going, to, you're working to personally decriminalise licence fees. Put pressure on people. You have a bigger platform than I would ever have. You have the power to get this stuff done. If it matters to you enough, you can get it decriminalised. 47,000 people in one year, in one year, having the stress and the worry of court, of being prosecuted for not paying a TV subscription service. How is this okay that we live in this world? Lucy, get the bloody job done. Pull your finger out. Do something. Jesus, please. It's ridiculous. It's, what a ridiculous situation this whole thing is. Go and have a look. As I said, I put the link to the Talk TV clip below. Loads of you sent me it to take a look at. And I knew it was going to wind me up. That's why I didn't do it when you first sent me it. I've, I've needed to uh, be, <laughs> be in a calmer position with a cup of tea before I can do anything about it. Go and take a look for yourself. Watch the whole thing. I've only picked a few bits out because obviously I don't want to get a copyright strike trying to keep it under fair use. And let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And while you're down there, leaving your comment, hit all the buttons and everything as well. No matter what buttons you press, press some buttons. It all helps. And if you do that, hopefully I'll see you in another video again soon when I'm a bit calmer. When I... Ta-da.